The Smart Shunt, the BMV 712, and the Link Shunt are the three electrical system monitoring devices made by Victron Energy that provide you with a dashboard to monitor the status of your battery bank and components. Welcome to Explorus.life. My name is Nate, and I teach people how to build DIY campers. Now, all three of these devices are simply measuring devices, and they mostly work in about the same way in that regard. They each contain a shunt, which is the actual electrical measuring part of the component, and a little computer board that is used to make the shunt be able to deliver its information to where it needs to go. They all show things like battery bank state of charge, battery bank voltage, how many amps are leaving the battery bank headed to various loads, how many amps are entering the battery bank from various chargers, and a ton of other historical data from the system. Now at their base, that is how they are similar. Now let's get into some of the similarities and differences of the components whenever comparing them one-on-one -on -one with each other, starting with the BMV 712 versus the Smart Shunt. The BMV 712 Shunt and the Smart Shunt are both mounted in an identical fashion on the negative wire between the battery bank and literally everything else in the system. In all of the Explorer's Life System designs, I like mounting this immediately to the battery side of the Lynx distributor. The BMV 712 has the physical gauge that you can mount to the wall to see the data that it's pulling. So, how does the Smart Shunt deliver its data? The Smart Shunt uses Bluetooth to communicate with the Victron Connect app so that you can see a ton of real time usage data and historical data too. But the BMV 712 is also a Bluetooth capable device and does actually the exact same thing. The BMV 712 delivers its data through both Bluetooth to the Victron Connect app and to the physical gauge. The Smart Shunt delivers its data through Bluetooth to the Victron Connect app only with no physical gauge. Now stick with me here because we are going to talk about using the BMV 712 and the Smart Shunt with the Servo GX and Touch 70 GX touch display later in this video. Now both devices have an auxiliary monitoring port so we can monitor things like midpoint voltage of a series wired battery bank, battery bank temperature, temperature of a particular component, or even temperature of the enclosure. A feature that both the BMV 712 and the Smart Shunt share is the ability to be wired as a DC meter. Now this means that you could connect these units on one of the negative wires going out to something like a DC air conditioner, a 12 volt fuse block, a DC to DC charger, or nearly any other DC load or charger to see how much that particular device is contributing to or depleting from the battery bank. The Smart Shunt and BMV 712 are normally used to monitor the entire system charging and discharging, but being able to use this as an additional feature uh, for an additional shunt as a DC meter is a nice addition for those who want or need it. Now lastly, the BMV 712 also has a relay output on the back of the gauge, which would allow for you to control an external relay to turn on or off when the shunt senses too high or too low of a temperature, battery bank state of charge, battery bank voltage, or a starter battery bank voltage. This is useful for turning on, let's say, a fan or a generator or a light during any of those parameters. So, wrapping up the BMV 712 versus Smart Shunt section of this video. The BMV 712 comes with a physical gauge and the Smart Shunt does not. Both units broadcast their data locally via Bluetooth to the Victron Connect app. Both units have an auxiliary monitoring input that can monitor for various items we just talked about. Both units are able to be used as DC meters for specific loads and chargers. The BMV 712 has a relay output and the Smart Shunt does not. Both units are able to be connected to a GX monitoring device, which we'll talk about in a second. And lastly, the Smart Shunt comes in a waterproof version and the BMV 712 does not. So as you can see, the units are very similar, but the less expensive Smart Shunt just misses out on a few features. Knowing all of this, 
Let's talk about the Lynx shunt because it's kind of different, but kind of the same. The Lynx shunt mounts in a completely different way from the BMV712 or the Smart shunt. It's designed to be bolted directly to the input side of the Lynx distributor and even has a fuse inside that adds protection to either the incoming wire or the outgoing bus bar, just depending on how it's designed into the system. For monitoring, it shares the same info as the BMV712 and the Smart Shunt, such as the battery bank state of charge, the battery bank voltage, how many amps are leaving the battery bank to loads, and how many amps are going back into the battery bank from chargers. The Link Shunt is different from the BMV712 and the Smart Shunt in terms of displaying information because it doesn't have Bluetooth or an included external screen. Instead, it's specifically designed to be connected through its VE CAN connection to a Victron GX device like the Servo GX to display its information on the Touch 70 GX touchscreen display or directly connected to a third-party CAN bus system like NMEA 2000 for display on one of their displays like a chart plotter on a boat. Now this is incredibly powerful and versatile system that we are not going to be talking about today, but there is a ton more information about that in the user manual for the device. Now it's also worth mentioning that the Smart Shunt and the BMV712 can also communicate with these third-party CAN bus devices, but only when connected to a GX device like the Servo GX. Lastly, when using the Link Shunt, or the Smart Shunt, or the BMV712 for that matter, with a GX device connected to the internet, system stats can be read and changed remotely through the VRM portal. Now, the Link Shunt does have a temperature sensor port and an alarm relay port similar to the BMV712, but for the rest of this video, let's assume that you're going to be using the Link Shunt with the Servo GX and the Touch 70 GX, and if that's the case, the Servo GX has four temperature inputs, four digital inputs, and two relays for controlling external things like fans, lights, or even turning on a generator when, let's say, the state of charge gets too low. The Link Shunt cannot be used as a DC meter, but the Link Shunt can be used in conjunction with a Smart Shunt, which could be used as a DC meter to feed information to the Smart Shunt. And here we've done our best to make a chart comparing the Smart Shunt, the BMV712, and the Link Shunt with the Servo GX. And while you're looking all of that over, here are my final thoughts about this. All three units are very, very, very feature rich, and one of them should honestly be a necessity in any system. Building a system without one of these three devices would be like operating a vehicle without a speedometer and a fuel gauge. The Smart Shunt is the most budget-friendly version, but it has the fewest features, but still has a lot of features, and the Lynx Shunt is the most feature-packed, but is also the most costly version, and it's a nicer form factor. And all three can be connected to the Servo GX, which expands the functionality of all three of the devices. So, I'd say that if you like the form factor of the Lynx shunt with the ability to mount it directly to the Lynx distributor, or you need the specific third-party integrations that it offers, go that route. Now, if you need something less expensive, I would say go with the Smart Shunt or the BMV712 and decide if you want the physical display on the wall or not. And, you know, with either one of these, there's always the option to add the Servo GX with the touchscreen display on down the road. Now, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I've got a playlist of full system installation tutorials that feature both the BMV712 and the Link Shunt that I think you'll like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.